Hey, Alistair, I, uh, I picked up on your thread from the Autodesk area, and uh, I saw you are having trouble with the eyes. So, first off, uh, cool-looking character. He looks like a Furby bird thing. I really like it. I uh, love the, the feathering you've done. Um, when it comes to the rig, I probably wouldn't use Human IK. Um, it's, I mean, I guess you could, but it's something I just wouldn't do. I just find it more confusing uh, especially when you're learning. I think UNIK has a lot of specific things it does that it does different from regular rigs. Um, so until you really dive into it, it can be confusing, uh, especially if you're just going to do traditional animation and not using mocap. Um, I'd stay away from it. But that's okay. I'll see if I can delve into it. I rarely, rarely, rarely use it, if ever, um, even when doing motion capture. Okay, so let's just take a look at what's going on here. So the first thing I would do... Um, Actually, let me just do something really quick, which is I want to change the size of my joint display. Joint size, there we go. And bring that down. Cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some of these joints. So I'm guessing uh, these are joints that you added um, since they're not named. Now, one of the things I would always do is name things. Uh, it just makes things easier in the end. Uh, right now, like you have a constraint on here. If I go to the um, channel box, I can see it's constrained to nerve circle one. That could be anything. And when you make these constraints, it'll keep that name, uh, even if you go ahead and change which, what it's constrained to. So if you think it's this, I don't, I don't know. So I'm actually just gonna kill that constraint and rename these joints. So let's go back in here. Look at these joints. So this one's the left one. I'm going to call it left eye joint. Oh, not joint T. E. And right eye joint. Cool. And then what I'm going to do is show their local rotation axes. And that's what's going to show, uh, tell us which way the, a the joints are pointing. Like, you know, when you draw a joint chain, um, it's built automatically. Generally, uh, X goes down the joint chain, but when they're like this, and they're just floating and they don't have um, anything that's probably world space, you can't always rely on what the translate tool is showing you, even if you're in object mode. Um, so what you want to do is go to uh, display. I never do it this way. <laughs> Transform display, local rotation axis. Great, cool. So yes, they are both pointing in X, which is great. And so over here, you have your little control for the aim. And there's some little bit of things here I would change right off the bat. One, name it. Uh, these two little guys I would parent under this one and unparent that because you don't need a group above it. And so now we have a control here, right? And then there's some weirdness here. This control itself has the aim constraint on it. I'm not sure why that is. So I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to name the curve. So we'll just call it L look at an R look at cool and then this is the main look at and so they're all tied in together generally speaking I'll snap these well we'll do it this way and then I'll maybe show it to you a little later also for some reason this pivots way out in space I'm just gonna go up here and say modify center pivot cool so now everything's where it should be as far as I can tell um, as far as what's constrained and grouped and bound, I'm not going to worry about the geometry just yet, so I'm just going to hide that. And so what I'm going to do is when you create a constraint, you want to constrain, first you select the master, and then you can select the um, slave, I guess, for a better or constraining object. And the reason for that is you can grab a whole bunch of masters, and then the last thing you select is going to be the slave. And it's going to split between those guys. So in this case, what we're going to do is just select that, uh, curve, select a joint, and go to constrain, aim constraint. I'm going to open that up because I want to make sure I'm going to set this reset to default. So by default, if you take a look here, what we have is our world up type is vector. A lot of times I'll do that to scene up. Um, so it's based on your scene. If you The vector by default is y up, which is fine here. As you can see, we have y up as well. Uh, for the aim vector though, it has x as its aim vector. I'm going to change that to z and leave the up vector where it is and hit apply. And now when I go ahead and move this, you'll see that that control, or that joint follows the control as we expected. Same thing over here. Now often I will use an up 
the vector object. Um, in this case, I think it's just going to be fine. So now you can see that these guys are doing what they should do. So let's get some geometry into the mix and see what's going on here. So I'm actually going to move this closer so we can see it. All right, so the eyes are moving as we expected. Let's see how they're connected. Um, okay, so there's something a little weird going on here. So if we look at this one, uh, we can see that we have these green guys. The green is a blend parent. When the way that happens is because you have a constraint on and then you key or you add another constraint on, in this case an aim constraint, uh, it'll add a blend parent so you can blend between the two constraints or between the constraint and the key. So we don't want that at all. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, and also for some reason it looks like, yeah, for some reason these, uh, oh boy, yeah. Um, you never, ever, ever want to group geometry under geometry. There's really no reason for it. Um, and it just tends to make things more difficult. And also um, it can, there's times like shear and scale and stuff like that will screw things up. So I would just say, don't do that. I'm going to take all these guys, oh geez, and put them all under here. Looks like you might have the, okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. I probably wouldn't constrain things either. Uh, either group it or bind it, but don't constrain it. Okay, sorry, I had to take a little break. Uh, okay, so these guys are all constrained to the control, which is a little bit weird because that means if you move the joint around, nothing's going to happen. Um, I think what I'm going to do right now is just kill all that as well, just so I don't get anything confusing going on here. So I take your joints, they're under the, oh, it's your own, is that your own control? I don't know what that is. Did you create that? Uh, and I have my aim constraints, good. And you also have to look at the aim constraints, they're the correct. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is now take these eyes, and I want to, I'm gonna just uh, skin them. Let me set this to reset. The only thing I'll usually change is the selected joints and bring this down to like three and get rid of, remove unused influences and colorize. I don't really like the colorize skeleton. Some people do. And also get rid of maintain max influences. Um, so we'll do that. Do that. Let's see what we get. Cool. Eyes are doing what they should. Now everything else, well, eventually you're going to have some lids on there too, I would imagine, but I'm not going to do that right now. Probably a beat control. Take all these guys and skin them to that joint there. Cool. So if you'll see, his eyes keep looking where they should be looking. Now the rest of the head isn't moving, and the rest of the body is not bound, it looks like. Okay. Um, and then take this head control. And let's take a look at the human IK. Actually, let me do this real quick. I'm going to take this, take these joints. Actually, let's just grab this in there. Select all the joints, including these, and grab the body and do a really quick bind. And let's see what that looks like. All right, so. Whoa. Uh, zero that. Okay, good. So this is where things get weird with that human IK, right? So um, let me find that joint. See, these are guides, so I don't know if that should be in there. Something makes me think it shouldn't. Uh, reference. Again, I never use um, human IK. Let's take a look. Maybe we'll get lucky. I'll take that, and instead I'll put it underneath, group it underneath the baby Kia head. Okay, that looks better. And just just so we can make this look a little bit nicer real quick, I'm going to flood the joints. This is just a flood smooth. Smooth everything out. Okay, cool. It is doing what I want to do as far as the eyes are concerned. So if you notice, when I look around, those eyes are going to always be looking at that control. So I take that control now, and I move it over here. You see that the eyes move as they should. Go back to that joint. We go. You can see that's doing exactly what it should. So I think part of the problem here is that those um, these guides are different from the actual final 
um, I a, a joint chain that gets created. So you want to parent them, your joints, into the right place. And then you want to connect things up to the correct place. So if you're doing, say, we're going to add like a beat control on here and a jaw control. Whoops. Double whoops. All right. Eek. Come on. There we go. And I'll just add. Let's just do it this way. Beak. Why can I not spell beak? There we go. Beak joint. And jaw joint. Cool. Um, I'm going to unbind those. Instead, bind that, and bind that. So now I have my beak, or my jaw, sorry, and I have my beak. And I also have it, the only reason I bound it here is that just in case I wanted to like maybe um, fix up the weights on that a little bit. So I'm going to go here and like grab those verts, grow that a few times out. That's probably good. Go to paint weights and I'll grab head and add that back into it. Right. And then I'll go back and just do some quick smoothing. Let's see what that looks like. And not great, but you get the idea. Actually, if we grab the other, the beak itself, we do a flood. See how it's slowly moving back? I probably went too, too overboard with the original, but you get the idea. Anyway, so now if I go to my human IK and switch it back to control rig, and I grab the head control, maybe I'll get lucky. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to parent these guys in to the head as well. So let's go back to that head. Oh, did I not parent them? Oh, I didn't parent them. I don't know what I did. So yeah, see the connections in it that are made now? So I don't know why. Hold on a second. Spine. I wonder if that's because I was in. Unparent them for a second. Super weird. Again, I never use left leg. Oh, I accidentally parented the left leg. So let's undo all that. There we go. So these guys go to the head. So basically, you you want to look at that reference, not at the uh, guides when you're parenting those controls in. So now if I go back and select that head. There we go, and we can even go in there and grab the jaw. Make sure you're in object mode. Mark, mark, mark. Right, and even the fur seems to be working, which looks really cool. I like that fur. But you're gonna get some. That's <laughs> I love it. Uh, that's his arm moving, right? And this is why, you know, you're going to have to go in there and paint those weights and make that work because that's clearly not correct. All right. Well, I hope that helps. And uh, let's see, do one last thing. I'm going to parent that under there. Oops, I went too far. Oh, you know what? Zero it out. Cool. Now he'll always look at the camera. All right. Hope that helps. And uh, good luck.